So, uh, I would like to talk to you about the uh, relative transfer and application to anything that's connected to climate. And uh, so, my first question is uh, why nobody wrote a climate model in paper? Actually, Stephen can do it uh, because what is a climate model? It is a Navier Stokes equation for the ocean and Navier Stokes equation for the atmosphere. Uh, in fact, you it's, you can simplify. You can uh, use uh, shallow water for the atmosphere, multi-layer, and uh, for the ocean, and uh, also some um, geostrophic approximation for the atmosphere. But basically, it's Navier Stokes. And then uh, you can ask, uh, you can put, you can put a small model for ice melting in the Antarctic, and a radiative transfer for the heat of the sun, and you have a climate model. So you could do that with with Stephen. So let me explore. Uh, let me explore the last point: radiative transfer. What is radiative transfer? Well, uh, as you can see, uh, it's uh, the sun hits the atmosphere. Uh, we, there are a number of phenomena which I'm not going to talk about. So I take a very simple case where the sun is on this side far away, and you are here at uh, latitude 45. So you get only square root of two, one over square root of two of the sunlight uh, density uh, intensity. And because uh, the Earth is, um, we are very small on the Earth, and the atmosphere is very thin compared to the radius, it's almost as if you were on a hyperplane. And then if you are on the hyperplane, the only important uh, uh, variable is the, the cosine of the angle of the vertical with the angle of scattering of the light. Because the reason why we see uh, in the outside compared to the moon, which has no atmosphere in the moon, when you look around, it's all black. But in the atmosphere, it's all light. And that's due to the scattering, the light photons collide with the molecule of the atmosphere, and you the light goes in every direction. So the light intensity is a function of the position x here p and the angle at which you look at it, omega. But, but because of this simplified geometry, it's only the function of the angle of omega and the vertical. The second variable is the temperature. And then you have two coefficients, very important coefficients. One is called the absorption coefficient, uh, which you will see in a moment. And A is the scattering coefficient, uh, which is uh, due to the cloud, for example. And then uh, uh, an important formula for the rest of my talk is called the Stefan Boltzmann formula, is that if, um, which appears because of black body theory of Boltzmann, and that's the Boltzmann function, and that's a Stefan Boltzmann formula, if you integrate this function with respect to mu, you get an exact value in T4. So, the, the equations are rather complicated, but don't worry. This is the only page where it appears. So the equation for the radiative intensity is a first order uh, equation in one variable only, the vertical. And you have this coefficient mu here. Then you have the, the decay of the light due to, uh, <coughs> due to the fact that it crosses an atmosphere. And then you have something which has uh, no physical interpretation here. And you have the famous Boltzmann function here, which connects to T. So you have, if you know T, this is a convective equation. T is given, uh, B of T is given by this. And the temperature equation is the classical temperature equation, except that- Just, just, just uh, one remark. You can explain what is uh, mu? New, uh, uh, no, not new, 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 new. Ah, sorry, the other. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you don't speak about new, so. So new, <laughs> uh, new is here. The sunlight is not monochromatic. It is, uh, uh, it is multi frequency from zero to infinity, and the the the, the strength 
with respect to the frequencies given by the blood body theory. It is this formula, mu3 over exponential mu over t minus one. So the, the, the spread of the frequency of a light is a function of the temperature of the guy who emits the light. So for the sun, it's 5,800 Kelvin. And the earth, which is about 300 Kelvin, it, it produces infrared. You don't see the, the light that the earth produces because of its temperature. So here's a here's a formula again, and here's a temperature equation. The temperature equation is the usual temperature equation where u is the solution of the Stokes equation. It would be the wind for the current, and uh, uh, you have uh, uh, the source term. The source term has two has two uh, uh, parts, which I put uh, for my numerical purpose on the two sides of the equation. So here. If it is monochromatic, uh, sorry, if, if k and a do not depend on mu, this integral can be integrated by Stefan Boltzmann formula. So this is T4. And this is a little more complicated. You have to integrate this equation. Okay, so what happened is that in the case where the coefficient do not depend on the frequencies, then you have an equation, which is the temperature equation with T4. And on this side, on, and as a right hand side, you also have T4 in, um, in an integral uh, term. And E3 and E1 are exponential integrals. So these, these are functions from the 19th century, uh, but well tabulated. We have formulas to, uh, <laughs> to integrate them. They could be singular because there is a log in them. But in this particular case, it's not singular. So, you have the result here of a planet uh, <coughs> which is like which received light from this side and uh, I put a current I put a potential flow going around like this uh, or actually uh, slightly twisted and you can see that the hottest part is not exactly horizontal it has been moved by the current Okay, but this is the limit of Trifem at the moment because I never used uh, I never use parallel uh, Trifem because I'm too old, so <laughs> and I work from home. But anybody who wants to do it is welcome. So it is theoretically possible to uh, compute the temperature uh, due to the sun on the planet. And by the way, you it seems that this is very sick. Uh, but it's actually uh, for pure graphic purpose. In fact, uh, in the computation here, you use uh, a change of variable, you use the uh, 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 you use the spherical coordinates and you work on a plane with periodic conditions. And so uh, this actually is very thin. So now, uh, a little bit about the uh, numerical method. So in principle, the numerical method is simply to say, I know my temperature and I compute my, my intensities and then I update my temperature with the temperature equation knowing the intensities. And this is a simple algorithm for which we have complete master of the convergence. First of all, it is uh, monotone. So Tn plus one will be greater than Tn if you start uh, below the solution and higher than Tn if you start above the solution. And then it converts quadratically. So it's very robust. And second, the difficulty is here. Here, this is a nonlinear function. So you think like T4, uh, but it must be uh, computed very precisely. Otherwise, the uh, results are no good. And so either you do a Newton step, but then I then I cannot uh, 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 guarantee the convergence. You have to start close to the solution, or you use IPO, and you use the variational principle of this equation. So this term is discretized by characteristic method so that the nonlinearity goes on the right hand side. This is the formula here, and then you're left with terms like T over delta T here. Uh, Laplacian of T, which both which have potentials, 
And this one also has a potential. It is the integral of the uh, Stefan Bolt, uh, of the Boltzmann function uh, <coughs> here, which you cannot compute exactly, except in some cases for kappa. Uh, in particular, if kappa is a, is a polynomial in terms of u, then you can compute it exactly. And so you can solve this problem by a field. Okay, so one more step for the theory. In fact, uh, <coughs> this looks complicated because of the first equation, but you can get rid of it. In, in, in the end, you get only to solve this problem. So you forget about the intensity. You solve a nonlinear temperature equation with a right, a complicated right hand side and a complicated nonlinear term. So again, this is very close to T4. And this, of course, you have to compute, but it's just a, a double interval to compute with some care. And so this algorithm converge. Uh, and so, in fact, the code is not very difficult. So here's a case. This is an academic uh, lake. It's a pond, actually. So there is wind on the surface. Uh, on, and uh, the wind creates a current. So this is the Navier-Stokes solution with very few points. But uh, in 2D, this is fine. Uh, Reynolds number to 500, something like that. So there is an AD here. And here is a solution of that nonlinear temperature equation coupled with uh, where the velocity comes from here. And you see that it hits the surface as you expect. But okay, so in this case, the, uh, the radiative transfer is only in the water. So what you say is that the, the sun intensity is on the surface and the uh, light goes in the water. And so the coefficient of absorption in the water is very important. And I use a linear, uh, <coughs> the linear regression curve uh, based on experiments to get this. And so this is pretty reasonable. And the funny thing is that, so I've given the temperature at the bottom. And the funny thing is that if, uh, okay, but it doesn't matter. So here's a bit of code. So this is the exponential integral. So you see, uh, no difficulty. It's just a semi-analytical formula where uh, you take a maximum, uh, uh, you, you take a certain number of terms in the formula. Uh, but it's limited because exponential of 10 becomes a problem. So if, uh, if, the, uh, if t is greater than 18, it doesn't work. But this is already pretty good. This is already pretty good. And this is the uh, IP of part. So IP of, uh, I don't use IP of, I choose DFGS, but I could have used IP of. And uh, with the criteria evaluation and the derivative of the criteria. No difficulty, the half a page in Twitter. No, so now we uh, finish my talk with the Lac Lemon. Uh, <coughs> so this is the first computation. On the lac -limon. So you see the temperature here. So again, uh, we put a, a small wind on the surface, uh, but we have current because the Rhone River enters here and gets out there. And uh, it, it's kind of funny to see that the hottest part of the lac -limon is in this region. So this is a distribution with respect to depth. And this is a fancy uh, uh, display with uh, MEDIT. Okay, so this is completely uh, irrealistic. This is, take, this is done with one file from the TPM example. And uh, the lemon is not at all so deep. Uh, so in fact, uh, this uh, last September, we tried to do better. I mean, uh, Frederick tried to do better. Uh, so what he did is spend a week on uh, getting uh, looking at the on the web do we have a proper definition of the lemon lake and so the geographic uh, system uh, there is a there is one uh, it you have to pay but because of uh, our collaboration with uh, um, 
uh, Lausanne, uh, we could get it free. And so you have the border and the rivers. You have the depth, all in a format which is uh, 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 special to uh, geophysics. And uh, <coughs> what's this one? Um, so I don't remember which of these ones. So you know. Oh, yeah, I know. The, so the geolac is the border. The isobaf is the line oh, of. Sorry, yeah, I said it. But uh, okay. and, and is, this, uh, is, is it? Form? It's a way to transform the SPH five in ASCII format okay. to to try to to read in Krippen. So, so it's just technical things as usual because when you get a format, uh, it is a little bit tricky format. So it, it's um, so it's a nice thing to know that uh, um, you can do it from the description or physical description. Uh, so how did Frederick do it? Uh, he construct the idea is to construct the surface mesh from the depth from the bathymetry. Uh, uh, no, I mean, to construct a 3D mesh from the surface mesh and the bathymetry. And so he did it in three steps. I will show you very quickly. Uh, so, first, um, this plugin, which is available in the, in the Prefem uh, when you download it, uh, this uh, um, uh, okay, so so you get this file from this uh, website, and then uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, you get this module from this website. Then uh, the um, Frederick wrote uh, two, um, uh, three or four uh, oh, little uh, uh, TDP files. One which constructs the polynomial border of the lake without the detail, because the problem is that this geometric uh, description of the lake they have everything including the boat almost very very detailed uh, and so, so you have one meter detail so uh, you have uh, in a port you have the la jeté uh, everything so uh, it's a crazy uh, line yeah, so i showed uh, show some uh, i show some picture um then you have to be able to read the bathymetric line as shown here so uh, line of constant depths, and uh, you have to transform that, and finally you generate a, t uh, a mesh according to Prefem format. So here are the steps. So you see the contour line of the lake. Then you see some details here. How crazy it is! So there is a you have to simplify this in order to get this one. Then you get a decent um, contour for which you can build the mesh by the automatic mesh generator okay so uh, so it was everything was ready to make a computation of the temperature but uh, using this strategy transfer but in fact the results are very disappointing uh, because first the triangulation is is too rich has too many nodes so this can be simplified it's not a problem but uh, the current of the lake the in and the out is very, very small. It's almost negligible. So the important uh, factor, physical factor, which governs the temperature of the lake is the wind on the top and the evaporation. You have to have evaporation. So that we didn't put in. And then uh, what do you put at the bottom? What did you put on the wall? It's most important. So on the bottom, Frederick claims that uh, the, the, he has read that uh, all lakes with certain depths have their water at four degrees because the water is heavier at four degrees. Uh, this has to be checked. <laughs> and then, yeah, but uh, you have that just on the bottom of the lake, but not in. Uh... Yeah. And so, so we have to have some kind of uh, of um, uh, uh, heat uh, lost by the by the wall by the contour of the lake it cannot be very big though. but uh, the biggest problem is that uh, it's actually a business local business instability is rather than a global uh, because what happens is that if you have a, dip, uh, uh, a difference of temperature 
from uh, in in the vertical, you will get Gusinski effect, and that is the thing that will mix. So even though uh, we have the tools to do it, we were not able to do it, and uh, uh, that's the end of the talk. We have time for one question before the coffee break or two. Uh, by the way, uh, after this webinar, I have a question. Okay, you have the question. Yes. yes. Uh, Olivier, how did you close uh, the surface of uh, the 3D mesh? Uh, by uh, a flat plane. Yeah, the surface is flat. Yeah, it's a flat, but. Uh, you build the bathymetry uh, as a surface? Uh, no, no, no. The, 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 you need the bathymetry of the deep. No, you have the contour. From the contour, you can make a 2D mesh. That is, yes. That's the surface. OK, so you, you add the, the, the so, bathymetry and the flat one. So, George, I have to send you the mesh to, to try to compute uh, the tsunami uh, in this lake because in the <laughs> middle of in uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 1300 or 1300 yeah it is recorded that uh, the surface was tsunami in the Lemon lake all the way to lyon uh, because oh. one big part of the mountain fell in the, in the lake near uh, montreux and uh, uh, the, that tsunami killed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So you can simulate it. Okay, thanks. Oui, vas-y, Pascal. Um, question about the, the problem climate, the surface. Uh, you plan to take into account uh, the day and variation. Uh, ah, day and night variation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so good question. The, and the time constant, uh, no, I tell for, you. Uh, I tell you. In, in this, you see, there is no time in this equation. So is the altitude. It's not the time. Okay. It's instantaneous because the variation of intensity is governed by speed of light. So it's a completely neglected. Okay. So when you receive light on your skin, you, you see it immediately. You feel it. Okay. So the sun uh, hits the earth on the day, and in the night, it doesn't. So in the moon, for example, it's hot during the day and it's minus uh, 275 uh, Celsius, so zero Kelvin during the night. In the Earth, it's not like that because of thermal inertia due to uh, due to capacity in this equation. Okay, so in this case here, uh, we don't uh, we. Uh, uh, okay, so I what I did is uh, I tried to get the stationary equilibrium of this equation, so 40 long. Uh, but uh, you're right, uh, you should do it during the day and during the night. And uh, but okay, but already with this, I mean, limited by the power of the computer, so there are many, many uh, things which are so, but I took. Uh, I took into account the uh, latitude, the TG, that's a cosine. 